I would say this this morning. There are some of you that are struggling in your mind about different areas of your life. And you just wonder if you're going to get to the other side. And I want to assure you, hang on, victory is ahead. Amen. <coughs> in fact, it may be if you look up here this morning, you notice the communion table has been moved. Because I really feel the Lord is saying that uh, I'm going to move by my spirit as people respond to hearing the word and they're going to need room up here to be able to pray for them. It's not enough to sit back and sit on the, the word of God and the promises of God. You, sometimes you have to stand. And you have to make a journey. We've all done it, maybe. I would like to think that somewhere in your Christian walk, you walked that narrow path to the cross and you said, Lord, whatever it takes, this is what I did. I just said, Lord, I don't know what's ahead, but I'll go wherever you would want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And so I took that step of faith, and that's what God's expecting. You take a step of faith, I'll do the rest. Just don't talk about it, do something. I'd just like to read that scripture uh, from 1 John 1, 9, just to refresh your memory. If, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you confess, you have to say something. Sometimes you don't even know why you have these hindrances in your life, but it's a good time to have some communion with God. Remember last week I said, every time you open that book, you're having communion with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You should treasure those moments, because every moment counts. You never know when... <laughs> A greater attack will come to your life. All right. Now, I have a lot of notes. Jen said she could help me. She says, you probably can't see anything up there. And she would type them up. And I, like she wants to help me in my garage. I say, stay out of the garage. Don't touch any of my tools or my nuts and bolts and anything else. I know her hammers. <laughs> I don't have mice as far as I know, <laughs> but I have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> she will jump in there to help me. I know when she moves things. I'm learning to grow with it. I'm just leaving it go. Even in, you know, we're the only two in the house. <laughs> we have these artificial plants and stuff. She moves them around. I used to do that in the church. I would just move things to see if people were paying attention. I was going to see how long it was going to take. Some, what happened to the communion table? Are we giving up on communion? No. You should take communion every day. You should get a bread and uh, maybe a grape juice and sit there and say, thank you, Lord. Examine yourself. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul says, examine yourself. Are you really in the faith? I appreciate Deb, you know. Let's get excited. Let's, let's express ourselves before the Lord. I have some thoughts in here that will encourage you to do that. Now, if you will do it, you'll benefit from it. Well, our title this morning, turn in your Bibles, please, to the first uh, the epistle of 1 John, chapter 5. Of course, I, when I ever, when I'm putting something like this together, I'm thinking in military terms and thoughts, and uh, there were times where we had to have an inspection, I told you about that, but also we had PT, we had to see if we still had the strength to do the job. And that's what I'm doing, I'm, I'm presenting to you, where's your strength? Is it in the Lord? Yes. Or is it in your own understanding, in your own strength? You cannot win this battle in yourself. You have to trust the Lord. And if you've made a decision for Christ, just like, I like that, Dave, that you uh, spoke about your decision for Jesus. 
So if I ever have to do your funeral, I forbid it's not too soon. Because you do a good job up here. I know where you stand. I won't have to ask anyone else. And uh, I'm still working off your last week's lesson about planning. You have to have a plan. You know? Uh, Janice asked me, I don't know, she just falls for it every week or every day. What time do you get up? Well, normally I get up at 4, but today I got up at 4.05. <laughs> I lay there for a few minutes and I said, oh, I can sleep in. I can't. So I get up and I head for my favorite spot. I call it my secret spot. And I begin to just present myself to the Lord. That's what we're called to do. Just come and say, Lord, I'm here. I thank you for being here with me. And I pray that you would just begin to show me things because the truth of God's word must become a revelation to you. A lot of people, they, uh, they may read the Bible through or they may uh, have a type of re uh, relationship, but they're not putting it into practice a lot. And... Uh, you need to not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer. And that's in every area of life. Would you agree? Yes. If you go to college, and I would encourage you, if you if that's your desire, not you folks, they want younger people. <laughs> uh, you know, when you get all done now, they say go out and put it to use. Or go out and practice what you've learned. And that's a compliment to the teachers and uh, if they've done their job. And if you uh, are working for someone, they are blessed if you show up on time. Amen. And uh, you're ready to go to work. And you're ready to bless them. And in the process of you blessing them, you will bless your life and you will show, God will show his great works in you. Uh, the title of our, our, our message this morning is Confidence. And this is speaking of confidence in many areas. I just believe with all my heart I would be successful in whatever I do. When we first got married, her dad recognized I needed help. <laughs> so he bought me a hammer and a lever. He said, you're going to need these. I still have those, that hammer and that level. It was a good one. It's a good hammer. And uh, I used it a lot. And what I used to do, if I was, he would get me started, and then he'd say, I'll see you later. That's what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to get you started, and i say this, now, I'll see you later. I'm expecting you to take notes and do your homework. Oh, I'm out of high school and I'm out of college and I'm out of that part of my life. No, you're not. You're always learning. You're always told to go this way, go that way, do this, put it into practice. I thank the Lord for my mother and my father. My mother used to say, I said, Ma, can I just stay home today? And I want to go play with the other kids. And she said, you're not like the other kids. You need to get up and get going. And uh, that really was engrafted into me. And I thank the Lord for her and her instructions. Always thank the Lord for your, your parents. They're there to help you. And you will really be blessed to remember the good things and all the things that have gone on in your life as you were growing up. And uh, give them honor. Now, in the, over in the epistle of 1 John chapter 5, we're picking up at verse 14. Now, I have a surprise for you. We're not going to finish uh, chapter 5 this week because God spoke to me to share some other things with you. And uh, I, uh, I'm thankful that, you know, I hear the Holy Spirit. And I believe uh, Dave heard the Lord speak too. He cares about those mice 
And he said, you know, get some more, get some more traps. If you keep them and you, you know, clean them out, you could probably make a hat. <laughs> probably say, I need it. You need it. <laughs> and so uh, we'll pick up again in, um, in 1 John 5.14, but uh, I'll tell you why I want to speak on the area of confidence. I have confidence in the Lord. I have confidence of knowing that He loves me because He gave His all for us. He gave His Son. That boggles the mind. The natural mind can't grasp that. But when God opens your understanding and He touches your life, all of a sudden it's like an explosion inside of you and you know that you know that God is real. Amen. And He comes to uh, guide you and teach you great things. It's not going to just happen. You're going to have to do some work. All right, let's just read uh, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence. Do you know where I got my title? <laughs> Come on, amen? Amen. amen. I'm, I'm not very deep. It's all surface stuff. It sounds deep. When you get in there and you start working it, it is. God rewards you. Those who seek Him are blessed. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. In Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And you say, Amen. Amen. Now, some of you have prayed, because you have had deep pastors or people tell you, just pray, ask Him anything, He'll give it to you. No, He won't. <laughs> He has some conditions. You have to believe. You have to hold your ground. You have to just walk it out day by day. Some things come quickly, and sometimes some things take a long time. And uh, if you stay in faith and you keep your trust in Him, He will reveal that this was the answer you probably have forgotten and move on to the next thing. There have been shakings in our lives, Janice and I, and uh, we just trusted God. We were determined. This is the way we're going to walk. We're going to serve the Lord all the days of our life. Every morning I wake up, and God knows, and I'm not lying to you. Paul said that. Peter, I'm not lying. This is the truth. I pray for my kids. Now, they're doing well. Much better than I it's, it's, well, if you're looking at material things and opportunities, I mean, it's amazing. Seems like my son has a printing press in his basement. <laughs> <laughs> Making money. <laughs> but, praise God, he's enjoying it. He loves the Lord. He went to Bible school. He's doing good. He's a salesman. I sat in one of his uh, uh, presentations and I laughed so hard. And, you know, I had that phone. And I forgot it has a video thing on it. I should have recorded it. I could have just bring it up here and play it. And you, you would be blessed abundantly. But I was so captured by his presentation and using military terms and so forth. Military teaches a whole lot of things. Some good, some bad. But I was thankful that I was in the military. He was thankful he was there. He saw things he didn't want to see, but God moved him on. We've had some interesting talks. And uh, God uh, showed him I was with him. And he was, we were with Greg when he was in Desert Storm. We prayed every morning together. But I pray for my family every morning. And for me and my house, we will serve the Lord all the days of our life. I confess it out. I say it. Amen? You get, you get the idea? You know, the, all, the, the, that table's gone because there's times where God's going to move on your hearts and you may want to get up. I've had this happen and come forward and I want to do just what Dave was talking about. I want to commit my heart to the Lord or I want to recommit my heart to the Lord. 
because I've drifted off. Now, there's a scripture in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 2, I believe, and it says, uh, therefore, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse, um, what is it? One. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. So you can drift away. Why? Well, I, I studied this and that, but I can just coast now. I'm just going to listen. I'm not going to do anything. You have to do something. So, uh, if God moves on your heart, I've had people, uh, one gentleman that, uh, well, he's gone to be with the Lord, uh, Clarence Hay. Anyone know who Clarence Hay? He was the superintendent of, uh, of Besmer. And I was preaching. So that, I'm amazed that things that I'll say, that people afterwards, some will say, say something, they'll say, well, I just really appreciate you said this or that. <coughs> and I'll walk away. I said that? <laughs> and then others will say, boy, that just really spoke to my heart and it set me free. Well, you know, that's the mystery of the gospel. I have the confidence in me, if I send forth the word, the Holy Spirit will do the work. Each of you have different areas of your life that you need something to happen. And God's going to speak to you if you have ears to hear and hearts to receive. Now, what is this confidence that we need to have? We need to have confidence in Him. Who's Him? One person knows it. Who's Him? Come on! Who's Yeah. Hit the keyboard. They're dead. You put them back to sleep. No, no, no. I, I, thank you. Come on, speak up. This is a, we're family, right? We're family. If I mess up, I expect you to forgive me. If you mess up, I'm going to forgive you, and we're going to march on for Jesus. Amen. In Him. How many of you are doing the things to where you're at from the Word of God that you're hearing from this pulpit to some degree? There's one, there's two. Praise God. I don't want to look, I don't want to see any more of that, but great God. God's All right. Jesus said, only believe that all things are possible to those who believe. I, you know, Janice said that she wanted me to get saved. Her parents wanted me to get saved. And I got saved. Amen. I received Christ into my heart. My life changed. And it was not ever going to be the same. And I got a little bit overboard. If you could, I don't believe that I... I wasn't going to leave Janice for a moment. I thought I had to go off to Bible school. And she had to pray me back down to earth. <laughs> Who's going to take care of the grass and everything else? <laughs> she needed me. Only believe. Today, do you choose to believe? Yes. 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 Okay, some of you didn't say it, and you need to say it. I believe that all things are possible through Jesus Christ. I believe the Lord wants me to speak to all of us about how He communicates with us. I'm still learning this. I'm in the process of new revelations, new thoughts, and you're drawing it out of me. Remember I told you, if you say amen, and if you join in, more will come out. We all need to be reminded. That's how you can keep your mind sharp. That's how, you know, when people say, well, how can you memorize all that? Well, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. I just keep hearing the Word of God. I keep studying the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit is at work. It's very important that you take this serious. Your, your life can change in a moment. Let it change for the good. Jesus is your healer. By His strike, you are healed. And if you don't receive it, it's not His fault. He already sent forth His Word. Salvation is for all. He did it 2,000 years ago, right? right? It's just sitting there, waiting to be received 
by everyone. And so, point number one, this is good. <coughs> this is a good thing I'm going to speak on here. The first point is this, your conscience. That's where God speaks to you about your conscience. If your conscience is telling you to do something, you better do it. Your conscience is made alive when you give areas, opportunities for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. In Romans 1, 20 and 21, and it says in my notes, read it. <laughs> See, I, got, I have notes that I have to follow here too. You see, every man has a conscience. Some override their conscience, and you could read that in the full reading of Romans chapter 1. But God makes, us, makes our conscience alive when we start pursuing the things of God. The enemy is going to try to confuse you. Uh, it says that in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that we are to cast down all vain imaginations. And anything that is contrary to the Word of God. And let your conscience rule you in the peace of God and the, and the direction of God, and he, you will be an overcomer. In verses uh, 20 and 21, it says this, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The world is without excuse. You know, you don't have to tell the world if they're in darkness. They know it. And when you start talking about Jesus, what are you talking about? You're talking about the light. You're talking about a path, a plan that God has for mankind. Because although they knew him, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. Now that's a key thought. You might want to uh, dwell there for a while in your prayer time. Be thankful. If you're not thankful for where you're at, you're not going to see the grace and the mercy of God. But because of, of, of their foolishness in their thoughts and their foolishness of heart were darkened. I think I missed verse, did I read verse 20? Yes, I did. And over in uh, chapter 2, verse 15, it says this. Uh, I'm going to go up to 14, I believe. For when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who shows the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and between themselves and their thoughts accusing or excusing them. In that, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the gospel. Everything's going to be exposed and judged according to the gospel. And then over in John 8, 9, it tells us that those who heard it, or heard the, the gospel being preached, and they were con convicted in their conscience. So God speaks to our conscience, and he warns us not to go this way or that way. I remember uh, uh, being around hot stoves and, uh, and telling our kids, don't touch that stove. And uh, sometimes they would, my son especially, would want to touch it to see if it was really hot. And then he learned, don't touch the stove, it's hot. He could have learned from just my words. My daughter, on the other hand, she was so young, she fell against the stove and burned her face. And uh, I mean, it was, it was bad. But we believed in the power of prayer. We had the confidence. We immediately went to prayer, did we not, Jim? And we, we began, we prayed for her, we trusted that God would bring healing to her face, uh, and as we, we had to leave, it was up here in Wisconsin, uh, in uh, Mercer, and as we were going, God told us to stop every place we could and put cold water rags on her 
put rags of cold water on her face. She's a beautiful lady. And no scar, everything was fine. And we just obeyed. A simple thing like that. Well, you could have thought of that. Well, I believe God directed us to do that. Praise God. In Acts 24, 16, now these are the things you're going to have to look at. Conscience bearing witness. Your conscience will bear witness. Every time we started to do something, Janice and I, we would always we go to prayer and we rely on that part of our, 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 our lives, of our conscience guiding us. But we have to do things, and I'm going to give you some more things to do. For example, number two, the Word of God. It's supernatural. It's alive. It's God-breathed, right? It's not a, it's, it's a book about God, but it's God speaking to people. Amen. In Ephesians 1.13, you've heard the word of truth. The word is truth. Say amen. Amen. And the truth of the gospel. Romans 10, 14. How will they know? Well, they'll know because God will send preachers out to tell them how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. If you want to see the power of God, start talking about the things of God. Talking to others. Just mention about the love of God. Put it back on me or on David. We, we have this fellow Dave in the... I use Dave stuff. It's good stuff. I mean, the, the traps are going up in place. He's got them all over at his place. Amen. But you can use his thing to open the door to talk about Jesus and about what God has done in your life. He was bold in his testimony, wasn't he? That's what you need to be. That's what, remember I told you, in Woodstock, Illinois, I marched around with a megaphone. Repent! <laughs> but praise God, God used it. He was, he was wonderful. It was a good learning experience. In John 8, 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Shall make you free. The result of hearing and believing in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of those who have believed the things of God. And I misquoted that and no one called me. <laughs> you don't have to call me on it all the time. I would just say that it's, a, it's such a powerful uh, uh, Introduction to, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So what's the first thing you have to do? What do you have to declare? I love him. I'm not ashamed of him. I love the Lord. But, verse 10, God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. And if you're born again, His Spirit comes in and abides with your spirit because you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? Amen. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I, I present to you, you can be a Christian and be a natural man, because you're not spending time in God's work. Now, 